Mm. Welcome to the another session of irrigation and hydraulic structure. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about how to calculate the life of a reservoir and how to calculate the trap efficiency. And uh, with a numerical example, we have discussed about how to calculate the life of a reservoir, how it is estimated. Now, in the current lecture, we are going to discuss about what is a dam, how the dams are classified, what are the different factors to be considered in the classification of dams that we are going to discuss. Now, what is a dam? Dam is nothing but it is a hydraulic structure which is constructed on a river or natural stream to impound the water on the backside of a dam. So, this impounded water for the formation of reservoir, a dam is constructed. So, whatever the amount of water which is stored in the dam or reservoir, which will be utilized as and when required for different different purposes. So, basically, dam is a hydraulic structure which is used to store the water and depending on the purpose of utilization of dam, depending on the use of dam, depending on the hydraulic design of the dam as well as depending on the <coughs> materials used in the construction of a dam, there are different different classifications of dams. Now, let us see according to the use, what are the different types of classifications of dams. According to use, there are three different types. One is storage dam, the diversion dam and the detention dam. Suppose if you take an example of storage dam, what is the meaning of storage dam? The purpose of this particular dam is to store the water whenever there is a large surplus and this stored water in the reservoir will be supplied as and when required for different different purposes. For example, the water stored may be used for hydroelectric power generation as well as the water stored will be used for the cropping of downstream lands. So, why the name is given as storage dam? The stored water, the whatever the water is there that will be stored in the reservoir and that will be used for different different purposes as and when required. It is a diversion dam. So, what is the purpose of this diversion dam? The diversion dam is constructed to divert the water or carry the water from different different places, from the dam to different different places because by constructing this diversion dam, it will create an head because we are not storing the water in the diversion dam. We are constructing the dam, diversion dam to increase the head level of the water so that the water in the dam will be carried or forwarded or diverted to the different different places like canals, ditches and other places where there is a need of water. So, the purpose of this particular type of dam is to divert the water into different different places as and when required. Okay? Now, if you see the third type according to use, it is a detention dam. This detention dam is also called as a flood control dam because we are storing the water temporarily in this particular type of detention dam whenever there is large supplies. So, during heavy rainfall or during heavy supplies of water, the water will be stored in the detention dam on a temporary basis and whenever there is a reduction in the flood levels, whenever there is a heavy rainfall reduces, so this temporarily stored water will be released at safe rate so that there is a protection of downstream land will be there. They cannot, they are not submerged under heavy floods. So, that is the purpose of this particular detention dam. Means, we are diverting the water, we are decreasing the water level or water head of this particular detention dams. Now, coming to the second classification. According to the hydraulic design, we have two different categorizations. One is the overflow dam and the second one is non-overflow dam. If you see overflow dam, overflow dam is nothing but it is constructed in such a way that the design is in such a way that there will be a possibility of overflow of excess water. There is a possibility of overflow of excess water over the crust. Whereas which is not possible, overflow of water is not possible in the non-overflow dam because they are constructed at a higher height than the maximum expected flood levels. They are constructed at a higher height compared to non-overflow dam, compared to overflow dams. Non-overflow dams are constructed at a higher height. So that there will not be any chance of overflow of water because there is no crust formation as like in the overflow dams. So that is the basic difference in the hydraulic design. One is allowed to flow the water, allowed to carry the water over the crust and the second one is not allowed to carry the water over the crust because there is no crust, it is constructed at a higher range. So, that is about hydraulic design. Now, coming to the third categorization. What is third categorization? According to the materials used in the construction. 
So according to the materials used in the construction of a dam, there are two classifications. One is rigid dams, and the second one is non-rigid dams. Coming to rigid dams, if a dam is constructed by using a rigid material, for example, concrete, timber, steel, or it may be by using masonry. So by using any one of these material, if a dam is constructed, then such type is called as a rigid dam. For example, if a material is non-rigid material is used in the construction of a dam, then such type of dam is called as a non-rigid dam. The best example of this one is uh, it may be an earth dam or it may be a rock fill dam because earth fill and earth, earth dam is constructed by using a soil and gravels, whereas rock fill dam is constructed by using a non-rigid materials uh, rocks. So that is the basic difference between rigid materials and non-rigid materials. Rigid dams and non-rigid dams. Now let us see in detail what are these different classifications and what are the key important features. Let us see. Now coming to the according to the use of dam, according to the use of a dam. If you see according to the use the first type of classification is a storage dam. The purpose of this storage dam is to store the water in the reservoir and as and when required it can be supplied for different different purposes. So example is also given Indra Sagar Dam. Indra Sagar Dam is one of the largest storage capacity of dam in India which is having a capacity of 12.2 billion cubic meters. And this particular dam is located in the Madhya Pradesh and which is impounding a water from the Narmada river. So water stored in the reservoir is from the Narmada river. Now let us move on to the next one according to the use diversion dam. So what is diversion dam? Diversion dam is nothing but a dam is constructed to raise the water head and thus there is an increase in the water head. This amount of water, whatever the water is there in the dam that will be carried or diverted to different canals, ditches or different different places where there is a need of water. So the purpose of this dam is to divert the water or carry the water from the dam to different different places. So this particular dam, the best examples of such dams are weirs and barrages. So weirs and barrages are the best examples. They do not store the water, they will be diverting or carrying the water from one place to another places. Next. Now, one of the example of this diversion dam is Bargi Diversion Irrigation Project on the right bank canal. This dam is also one of the largest multipurpose dam and this is also this dam is also used to divert the water from the right bank canal. This particular project is also located in the Madhya Pradesh and uh, the water important is the Narmada river. Now, the third category according to use Third one is detention dam. What is the meaning of detention dam? Whenever there is a large supply of water into the dam, so those water will be stored in the reservoir and whenever there is a flood a reduction in the flood levels and these temporarily stored water will be released at the safe rate such that there will not be any damage occur to the downstream lands of the dam. Okay. So here one example is given, pictorial graph is given. Let us consider ABC is the natural hydrograph of the a channel or river stream with a discharge Q1. Now let us assume we have constructed a detention dam on this particular river channel, river stream. Now there is a reduction in the flood hydrograph from A B dash B. From discharge level is reduced from Q1 to Q2. So this is how we can reduce the flood levels by constructing a detention dam. So in this detention dam there are two types of them. Basically there are two types. One is there is an allowance for temporary stored water can be released from the reservoir through the outlet and there is another type which is in which there is no outlet. So as there is no outlet provided in the detention dam so the water that which is there in the backside of the dam in the reservoir that will be used to increase the water levels in the adjoining area because there is no outlet the water will be 
sinking into the adjoining area so that the water level in the adjoining area will be increased. So such type of dams are called as water spreading dam or it may be called as a dike. Now here one more classification is there that is a dam is constructed across a tributaries which is carrying a heavy silt. So such type of dams are called as debris dam. The purpose of this debris dam is to trap the sediment which is carried from the water from the tributaries. Right? This is one more classification of detention dam which is exclusively constructed to trap the sediment in the water from the tributaries. Now if you move on to the second classification that is according to hydraulic design. According to hydraulic design we have different different classifications. One is overflow dam and the second one is a non overflow dam. So what is non overflow dam? Non overflow dam is the one which is constructed at a higher height than the maximum expected flood levels. Such that there will not be any chance of or there will not be any design for the overflow of excess water. So that is the reason which is called as non overflow dam. Here in the picture you can see non overflow dam first one. And on the other side you can see a overflow dam. What is overflow dam? Overflow dam is nothing but there is an allowance where the design is in such a way that whatever the excess supplies are there, excess water supply is there that will be carried over the crust because the height is designed, the height is designed in such a way that there will be a chance or possibility for excess water is allowed through the crust. So this such type of overflow dams are also called as a spillway also. So this is the basic difference in the hydraulic design which is constructed at a higher rate in which overflow is not allowed and one is constructed relatively at lower height where there is a chance of carrying the water through the crest which is also called as a spillway. Now moving on to this one here you can see what is the picture of overflow dam. Now moving on to the next category that is third category according to the materials used. So according to the materials used in the construction of a dam there are different different classifications. The first one is rigid dam. What is the meaning of rigid dam? If a material constructed if a rigid material is used in the construction of a dam, then such type of a dam is called as a rigid dam. So rigid materials are concrete, steel, timber or it may be a masonry. Right? Suppose let us uh, take an example, let us take the classification of dam according to rigid materials, rigid dams. Right? The first one is concrete or masonry gravity dam. Means a gravity dam can be constructed by using the masonry or concrete rigid material. The second classification is concrete or arch, concrete arch dam or masonry arch dam. Means arch dam may be constructed by using a rigid material, concrete or masonry. The next category is, third category is concrete buttress dam. Next one is steel dam and the next one is timber dam. These are the five different classifications of dam according to rigid material used in the construction. Now let us move on to the next one, non-rigid dams. What is the meaning of non-rigid dams? If non-rigid material is used in the construction of a dam, then such type is called as non-rigid dam. So the best examples for non-rigid materials is soil and gravels and rocks. So if soil and gravels are used in the construction of a dam, such type of dam is called as an earth dam. And uh, the next one is if rocks are used in the construction of a dam then such type of dam is called as rock filled dam. Here in the picture you can see both the examples rigid dam and non rigid dam. A rigid dam is the one which is constructed by using a concrete material and non rigid one is by using constructed by using the rock fills. Now let us move on to the next slide. Now let us discuss what is a rigid dam and non rigid dam and what are their key features. Now coming to the rigid dams, gravity dam. Gravity dam is also called as one of the rigid dams. See what is the purpose of this gravity dam? Why it is called as gravity dam? The gravity dam is nothing but it is whatever the force is acting on the gravity dam that will be resisted entirely by the self weight of this particular dam means the gravitational weight. 
So whatever the forces acting on this particular dam will completely be resisted by the self weight of this particular dam. Means self weight of the dam is the only way which is resisting the failure of the dam. So such type of dams are made by using concrete or masonry. So where we will use masonry and where we will use concrete. If the structure is of less importance, we can prefer masonry gravity dam. If the structure is of major importance, then such type of dam is constructed by using concrete gravity dam. Okay. So gravity dam either may be straight or curved in plan as per the requirement. Now coming to the advantages of this gravity dam. What are the different advantages? So out of the so many advantages, the major advantage is it is having a very longer life. Because the material used in the construction is very very rigid. So as and also one of the another advantage is it requires very less maintenance. And it is more stronger and more stable compared to the other types of dams. And one of the important advantage is if we prefer if we prefer gravity dams, then there may be a possibility of spillways, overflow spillways over the crust, which is not possible in the non-rigid dams, like earth and rock filled dams. Overflow of possibility is not available. It is possible only if we go for a rigid dam by using concrete or by uh, masonry only. Right? Now these are the important advantages of gravity dams. Now let us see the disadvantages of gravity dams. See these gravity dams need more stable foundation, rock, strong rock basis uh, suitable. So it is constructed only on sound rock. It cannot be constructed on a permeable or less porous rocks. And the next one is it is high initial cost. It requires very high initial cost. Though the maintenance throughout the life is very very less, but the initial cost of construction is very very high. And also one of the important disadvantages it requires skilled labor and mechanized machines. Mechanized machines. Then only it can achieve faster construction. If the mechanized equipment is not available, then such a dam construction may be delayed and it, it may also be difficult also sometimes. So they are the disadvantages of gravity dams. Now let us, let us move on to the next type that is arch dams. So what is an arch dam? Arch dam is nothing but which is basically curved in plan and whatever the forces which are acting on the dam through the water that will be resisted completely by the arch action. So this arch action is transfer this arch action will transfer the loads to abutments. So rather than foundation of this arch dam, the abutments should be very very strong because the most of the loads, the most of the loads transferred from the arch action to the abutments only. So whatever the heavy loads are there that will be transferred to the abutments. So these abutments should be placed on a heavy sound rock base. Otherwise, the stability of the dam will not be achieved in terms of the safety of the dam. So whatever the remaining loads are there, that will be transferred to the foundation of the arch dam through the cantilever action. But the majority of the load will be transferred through the arch action to the abutments only. So that is the reason abutments should have a very strong rock base. Okay, so that is the advantage of this one. So foundation may be less stable but the abutment should be very very strong. Now here you can see in the picture, in the picture you can see how, what is the section and the elevation of the arch dam. You can see the elevation is varying throughout the base. Base is a little bit larger compared to the top of the dam in the elevation. Now here you can see the abutments are placed in the sectional view we can see the abutments are placed on a strong rock base because whatever the water force which is acting on the arch the entire or mostly the load will be transferred to the abutments. So that is the reason the abutments should have a strong rock base rather than the foundation of the arch dam because through the foundation to the foundation a very less amount of load will be transferred to the cantilever action. Now let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this arch dams. See one of the important advantages is this 
the length of this arch dam is very less compared to its height height may be more but the length will be very very less because as we are constructing in between the hills to form strong abutments okay next advantage is the arch dam requires less materials in the construction because that section is completely reduced it requires very very less materials okay these are the two important advantages of arch dam now let us see what are the disadvantages of arch dams it requires very very skilled labor during the execution and for the design also because as it is curved in plan the execution is very very difficult and uh, design also requires very very skilled employees so that is one of the important disadvantages of this particular arch dam skilled labor is very very essential and the second disadvantage is as there are so many complexities in the arch dams in the design and while executing so it requires It, the construction may be delayed it may not be possible as uh, it is constructed that like, uh, normal dam is gravity dam is constructed it requires more time that requires for a uh, concrete gravity dam so this is one of the important disadvantages of arch dams now let us move on to the next one buttress dam here a deck slab is formed which is facing towards the upstream side of the dam and this deck slab is supported by a buttresses at different different intervals so these buttresses are nothing but they are long solid rigid pots they are kept in different different intervals so the entire stability of the dam will be completely dependent on buttress as well as base of the deck slab how they are constructed now if you see what are the what is the pictorial view of this buttress dam here you can see the buttress dam is there is a hollow portions in the dam because we are providing walls at different different intervals so there may be a possibility to access the downstream side of the buttress dam which is not possible in the concrete gravity dam as we are providing at buttresses at regular intervals in between the buttresses there is a accessibility is provided here the space may be utilized for other different different purposes now we see the types of this buttresses dams there are two types basically deck type as well as multi span type here you can see the pictorial view of deck type as well as multi span type now if you see what are the important advantages of this particular buttress dams so buttress dams require very very less material but it requires skilled labor and as the material required is very very less the cost of construction will also very very less and there may be a possibility to access the downstream side of the buttress dam because we are providing hollow sections we are constructing buttresses at different different intervals so in between the accessibility will be there so there we can use the place which is hollow at the downstream side that can be used for different different purposes also now the another disadvantage is the important disadvantage of this particular buttress dam is we require a skilled labor because there are so many different components sections are there in the buttress dam then we require a skilled labor and uh, this type of buttress dam is more susceptible to damage means if any single damage is happened in the upstream deck slab then the serious damage will be there serious effects will be there to the life of a dam so that is one of the important disadvantage of this particular buttress dam now moving on to the next type which is a steel dam what is the meaning of the steel dam if steel is used in the form of a framework and a thin plate on the upstream side then such type of dam is called as a steel dam so what is the meaning of this steel what is the purpose of this steel dam it imports the water with respect to the upstream side a thin plate will be provided so that thin layer which will be supported by the different different framework constructed by using steel struts so in india there is uh, no such type of dam is available you can find it in the foreign countries and other different countries but uh, in this type of dam there are two basic types are there one is direct structured type and the second one is cantilever arch cantilever type here you can see what is direct structured and cantilever type see here in direct structured whatever the deck slab is there thin sheet deck slab steel deck slab is there that will be supported by the struts which will be directly transferring the load load which is acting on the tip plate to directly it is transferred to the ground through the struts whereas in the cantilever type the top 
strut whatever the drop strut is there that is forming a truss action cantilever action that will be inclined in nature so that is the basic difference between direct strutted type and the cantilever type so these are the main difference between these two now if you see what are the advantages of steel dam obviously the cost of construction is very very less and also material required is very less and with the steel we can construct with more ease and rapid construction It means access the construction may be very very fast and also they have been found on it to be cheaper than the rigid dams and also leaky joints whenever there is a leaky joints on the upstream side that can be welded by using steel or welding process very very easily and also they are not affected by the frost action whereas concrete and other types of dam are affected to frost action which is not possible in the steel dams that is one of the important advantage now if you see what are the disadvantages of this particular steel dams steel dams are lighter and if heavy shocks are transferred from the water to the dam top deck slab then there may be a serious effects on the stability of the dam because this material cannot take a shock sudden loads or sudden shocks from the water which is there in the upstream side that is one of the important disadvantage and the life of the dam is known to be shorter as we are constructing with the steel the life may be a shorter one and there is a considerable there is a considerable concentration of bearing stresses so these are the two important disadvantages of this particular steel dams now coming to the timber dams so what is a timber dam timber is used in the construction of a dam in the form of framework for example the life of the timber is very very less means this type of timber dams are suitable where the timber availability is plenty then only we can prefer this type of timber dams in timber dams there are three different types one is a frame type timber dam the second one is rock filled cry timber dam and the third one is beaver type timber dam come to the first one a type type a type a frame type timber dam here the shape itself is indicating that a uh, letter a so that is the reason it, it is mentioned as a frame type timber dam see here you can see the different different components used in the making of this a frame see there are sills struts wells struts and laggings so by using these components this a frame type timber dams are constructed now if you move on to the second type that is rock filled timber cry dam what is the meaning of rock filled timber dam the wooden wooden members are placed or joined in the horizontal as well as <coughs> cross sectional directions they are placed in either direction and these gaps are filled with the rocks to avoid the more stability and you can see the pictorial view of this particular rock filling and how the rock filled cry dam is timber dam is constructed it is constructed in a stages wise and at the end you can see the rock fill is rock filling is there to give the more flexibility to the rock filled timber cry dam now let us see the third type beaver type of dam what is the meaning of this beaver type the wooden logs are arranged in this direction and they are pinned together at one particular place in the earth fill or sand fill and in between these logs there is a provision of uh, rocks or the uh, gravels heavy gravels or boulders so that there will be a chance of formation of this inclined surface means embankment may be formed by using such kind of arrangement so this type is called as beaver type of timber dam beaver timber dam now let us move on to the next slide what are the advantages of this timber dams now the one of the important important advantage is its initial low cost and the second one is suitable for any type of foundation it is suitable for any type of foundation that is biggest advantage and next disadvantages are it requires very high maintenance cost frequent maintenance frequent inspection checking is very very necessary in case of timber dam as the life of the timber dam is very very less and suitable only for shorter heights we cannot increase to larger heights that is one of the disadvantages of timber dams now let us move on to the next type next dam that is earth dam and rock fill dam so what is the meaning of this earth dam earth dam is nothing but 
which is constructed by using locally available soils and gravels such that by using those locally available soils and gravels we may construct an embankment on the either sides so that there will be a formation of the road on the center of the earth dam there are so many types are there we can form embankment on one side or we can form on the either sides also it depends now here you can see the first figure is representing the sectional view of the earth dam see here two embankments are formed on either side in the center portion there is a impervious core is available so that whatever the water which is passing through the upstream side pervious shelf is there that cannot be transferred to the downstream side because if the upstream water is carried to the downstream side then what happens there may be a chance of soil erosion on the downstream side so that is that will be a failure of the dam again so that is the reason in between a uh, impervious core is mentioned now if you see what is the rock fill dam the rock fill dam the rocks are used to form the slope so, so that there will be stability is provided to the dam which is constructed to impound the water so here in the rock fill dam rocks are forming in a slope so that the stability will be provided to the dam to impound the water on the upstream side of the dam now there is another combination that is by using combination of earth as well as rock fill dams we can construct the th third type what is the third type it is a combination you can see it is a rock fill on the downstream side on the other side rock fill is there and on the left side you can see the earth dam earth dam is formed by using a embankment so combination can also be constructed it depends on our requirement and our site suitability conditions so these are the three different combinations of earth rock fill and a combination of those now let us see what are the rock fill and earth dam advantages the advantages is the ease of construction it can be constructed easily by using less skilled labor because just formation of slopes is there so skilled labor is not required that is one of the important advantage and they can be constructed rapidly easy construction rapidly they can construct and the another important advantage is they can be extended in the future also because it requires a very less amount of time and future construction future extension of height may also be possible in this particular arch as well as sorry earth fill as well as rock fill dams earth and rock fill dams now let us move on to the disadvantages of this particular earth and rock fill dams the important disadvantage is, is failure is sudden it will not give any type of warning and another important disadvantage is there is no possibility of overflow of water if there is a by chance any overflow of water is there then that will lead to the erosion of the soil on the <coughs> downstream side of the this arch and rock fill dam if such thing is going on then there will be a <coughs> failure of the dam there may be a chances of failure of the dam if erosion is going on in the earth or rock fill dam now these are the important disadvantages of this particular rock and earth fill dams now that is about uh, for today's class in the next class we are going to learn about what are the physical factors which are governing the selection of a type of dam till now we have discussed so many types of dams according to use according to the hydraulic design according to the material used in the construction now let us decide let us see what are the factors governing in the selection of this particular types of dams that we will see in the next class till then thank you so much have a nice day